Tokyo. What's up, dude? How's it going? Uh, so, uh, I wanted to come on and show you this. The latest instrument to make it to the basement. If you're not familiar with this particular model, this is an Eric Johnson model. Uh, so, I, I want to say it was 2011? Was it 2012? He came out with a line of rosewood fretboard uh, strats. He went with the binding, which I like. It's kind of a, a play on the 65, right? The oversized dot inlay, again, playing on the 65. My select strat, and I have a 65 made in Japan reissue that look very similar to this. It's an exclusive, I think. I don't believe this is available on any other guitar. It's the Palomino, medium Palomino metallic which is pretty cool. Uh, and then he makes a whole bunch of changes to the guitar that I really agree with, right, versus a standard 65 uh, model. So uh, we'll just go over all the little things he does. Uh, first of all, it's full-on lacquer head-to-toe. This is like, a, you know, an AVRI quality, right, uh, American uh, vintage reissue. So lacquer head-to-toe. Um, I like the binding. I, I really like that. Uh, just cosmetic, but I like it. Uh, again, the dot inlays, that's less cosmetic for me. I like the oversized dots. They're easy to see. And quite frankly, even the side dots are much more high contrast, you know, like a Les Paul or an SG with the with the side binding. So, I again, I, I kind of like those choices. Uh, went with a 12-inch radius fretboard. Now, that's the same as a Charvel, as a Kramer. You know, there's a lot of other guitars that I really like, and it's even flatter than the so-called modern Fender uh, fretboard, which is a 9.5. So a vintage Fender fretboard is a 7 and a quarter. A modern one is a 9.5, and, and this is a 12. Um, my Select Strat is like, a, I think, a 14 through 16 or a 12 through 16. So they can get even flatter. But this is one of the, and I think I had a, um, uh, uh, what was it? I guess it was a custom shop designed, made in Mexico, like 60s Strat that was a 12-inch, like a player's Strat that was a 12-inch uh, radius. But this is one of the few 12-inch radius you really see out of, out of Fender. You know, they're, they're way more into either the 7 and a quarter or the 9 and a half. Really, 9 and a half is so, sort of taken over their lineup. But I like that. And then he uses uh, medium jumbo frets. Again, put me down as a... <laughs> yes, I like that. Um, a lot of the vintage stuff will have the tall narrow, right? Uh, that seems to be the vintage spec. The frets on my Made in Japan 65 reissue are pretty thin and not even, not even that tall. They're really just vintage frets, which I'm not all that crazy about. Uh, compared to these. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd say the only thing um, I'm not too crazy about is the bright white plastics. I feel like you could have gone with something vintage and don't be surprised if you see this change <laughs> to like a mint green pickguard and some aged plastics. I just think it would just pull in more of a vintage vibe. Uh, it's a v-neck. It's a soft v-neck. Now at first when you pick it up you're like... <laughs> Like, oh, this this feels a little is it's a this is a chunky neck, but it's not. And and I'll tell you why, because it breaks away from the side so quickly, right? So if you were looking at a if you're looking at a, a neck and you sort of like cut it a, on a saw and you're looking at the profile and the frets are at the top and the back of the neck is on the bottom, uh the breakaway on a on a V neck is very quick from the sides, and it leads to a you know a rather pointed. Um, well, I guess you'd call that the chin, right? So the chin is rather pointy, 
the cheeks are very sallow, right? If you get a C, the cheeks are much rounder and don't break away as quickly, right, towards the center. And the chin is rounder, not as pointed, right? And then when you get to the D, there's almost no chin. It's a much thinner neck. That becomes almost flat. And the cheeks are super wide, big chubby cheeks, right? That's the D. Almost like a boat bottom, right? Like a, you know, like a small uh, flat bottom boat, right? So there's, there's all these different neck profiles. And I have to say, I really love the D, uh, the V, right? I know there's some guys out there that love the D. Look, I got, that's, that's whatever you're into. That's cool by me. Me, I'm a V guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Gotta love the V. Uh, again, the only thing I might change is, is the plastics. Uh, like all uh, Eric Johnson's, there's no... <clears throat> there's no um, back plate. And they don't even uh, make holes for the back plate. And this one isn't particularly... Um, if I can get it in a shot here flamey but i really just think that they they don't spec it with flame maple but i do feel like the eric johnson's get flamier cuts <laughs> than than other models uh in their it's courtesan again that i like um kind of a charvel thing as well um courtesan necks i i think to me versus half son I, mean, I don't think they look as good the grain pattern isn't quite the same um, they they claim that there's a strength difference with Cortison. I just know that I think it looks better. Um, and then of course the the logo is the the over the top. I don't know if I can get it in this camera here, but the, the logo is sort of like applied over the top of the finish. You know that really nice. And I like the vintage tint to it. I, I, again, the whole thing, I, I'm just I'm just digging the whole guitar. The only thing, not crazy about the bright white plastics, but that's easily, that's cosmetic. You keep the old ones, and then later on, if you want to, uh, you know, get rid of the guitar, you say, well, I can put the plastics. I, you know what, I'd probably just put the plastics back and sell it as stock. Or you could just leave it on and say, uh, includes all the plastics in the case, you know. Um, it was a really good price on this guitar maybe because the palomino isn't as popular but i like the palomino um but it was like a thousand bucks less than a brand new one so i'll, I'll take it i don't i don't know they make the brown on the market anymore i don't think so i think it's just the the turquoise the uh what is that lucerne fire mist and dakota red i won't say is the other one which I'm sure would look really nice, the Dakota Red. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Um, he's got his special pickups. Um, and of course they're single coil, there's no hum canceling or anything like that. <laughs> uh, but I really, really like the sound of them. Um, that was the neck. And then here's the position four. It's a little brighter because um, one of the things Eric does is that in a standard Strat, the bridge would not go through, let me get it on this camera here, the bridge would not go through uh, the tone knob. Uh, and you'd have a tone knob for the middle, and you'd have a tone knob for the neck, right? That's the standard configuration of a Strat. His Strat, this goes through a tone knob, and this goes through a tone knob, but this goes direct, right? So it just reverses the wiring between the, the bridge and the middle. And because of that, uh, the middle is very bright, um, you know... <laughs> 
right, compared to the the other two pickups. And what it does is it makes the when you're with the you know the doubled up configurations here, the parallel configurations, you know, uh, it, four and, and and two here, uh, it makes it a little bright, a little spankier. You know, it, it, it's kind of nice how it. Uh, uh, how it sounds with that without that that tone on the middle pickup and now here it is and that was uh, position four let's go to position three how much brighter and then position two And then, of course, position one or the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, I think they sound great. The Eric Johnson Strat. So I've been looking for, you know, like maybe another vintage style uh, Strat. And, uh, you know, the more I read... Like all the features, the V-neck, the special wiring, the flatter radius, the binding on the neck, the oversized thought inlays, lacquer head to toe. Um, I was just like, you know what? That's a that checks a lot of boxes for me. I, you know, it, this really could be a, a good guitar. So I took a chance on one. I, I, and again, the price probably really pushed it. It was around what that SG was, except it wasn't owned by a smoker. <laughs> and perhaps a cologne salesman uh instead it, you know it, it's really nice and clean and there's like not a mark on it, it it's the the guitar is damn near mint which is always nice except for my greasy smudges but uh yeah yeah uh i'm a fan so um the it, I might do a video where I, I switch out the plastics. I think it'll look better with the vintage plastics. But what do you think? Should I switch it out? You like the bright white? It just feels like a little too, a little too bright. I feel like if I went vintage, you know, it would, it would pull the the like the, if I went like mint green, it will pull the brown in a little bit better. Right? I feel like it's pulling more white out of the out of the brown than the right it might look a little more golden with the green you see what i'm saying pull that that a little bit more of that pigment out but maybe it's all in my head anyway uh i've been digging this guitar <laughs> Fender, Eric Johnson Strat. Uh, you'll see more of it <clears throat> coming up as I, uh, you know, set it up. And it, it's actually got a really good setup out of the box. And I tweaked it a little bit with my, um, 
you know, with my gauges because I was worried that it wasn't quite matching the radius and I was correct. Felt, felt a little bit more sloped, uh, but it's been playing great. It's been playing really good. <laughs> And it's so, you know, if you're a guy who likes to put the thumb over the, you know, over the top, the V-neck really, really makes for that, you know, because it, again, it's one of those necks that it, it's, it's chunkier front to back than my modern C shape, but it feels to some degree smaller in the hand because it fits that little, you know, it turns out your hand is kind of V-shaped. <laughs> so you, you get that, the V in the V. <laughs> and it, it, it really works, I gotta say. I, I have another V-shaped uh, neck, but it's a hard V. Uh, this is the soft V, which is a larger neck. The hard V is, is without a doubt smaller, because the reason why it's hard is because they break away more of the wood, right? They shave down more of the wood till it comes to a sharper point. Um, this one they leave more wood, so it's not quite as be as crazy as the hard V. But that's a 54. This by the time they get to 65, you know the soft V is really more of a thing. Actually, but I don't even know that it's even period correct for 65. And the other thing I noticed is my Fender the Strat also has a V neck, which would make with it. You could get the str they made that Strat in a bunch of different necks. They made them in. It's been found to be U shape. C shape, D shape, V shape. So it looks like they were all over the place and you they would make a bunch of different neck shapes and you could just go in the store. That was when you had to go to the store and pick out a guitar. They were all over the place. Uh, that particular one was a V shape. And uh, when I picked it up, I said, oh, no wonder I like this guitar so much. It also has a V neck, you know? Anyway, there you have it, Eric Johnson. <laughs> Rosewood Strat. Uh, you can still get the guitar. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to find one on Sweetwater. But I don't think you can get the Palomino any longer. I think it's just the uh, the other three colors. Yeah, maybe the Palomino didn't do well. I don't know. It is a bit of a muted color, you know, for that time period. I mean, compared to Dakota Red or Lucerne Fire Mist or Tropical Turquoise, <laughs> you know, those are much more you know, in-your-face colors than, than this, which is way more muted. All right, dudes, there you have it. As always, thanks so much for hanging out. And rock on.